Dear listeners of Radio Maria in New York, the following program features Mike Salvatorelli. Welcome. Well, very good evening to you, Father Walter. Yes. So it's all yours now. You're going to have your guest, and you're going to have a nice interview uh, explaining and showing to us real people and real faith. Well, this evening on Faithful Live, we're going to have a theme of pro-life. Oh, good. And we're going to talk about, uh, uh, actually explore, by way of two of our guests, uh, different aspects of pro-life. Uh, we call it pro-life because uh, we are for the living, the breathing, the actual entity itself of life given to us by God and the respect for it. And there are people in this world that do not respect it, and they call themselves uh, choice, pro-choice. I prefer to call them call these people pro-death people, mm-hmm. because they actually, when you participate in abortion, that is, you're, you're participating in, in the killing of innocent children. So to me, it's called pro-death. That's my personal opinion. But anyway, we're talking about pro-life, and in this series, we'll have two people, the first of which uh, is a young lady who has been very, very active in pro-life movement. Uh, her name is uh, Gia Chinta. BTLO. Gia, are you there? Yes, I'm here. And uh, Gia has been, um, she's been active for a few years now doing uh, I, what I call really the work of God in, in, in just in short term. Um, she was born and raised in the Bronx. She attended St. Benedict's Elementary School, St. Raymond's Academy for Girls. She's a graduate of Fordham University with a BA in English Lit and Religious Studies. And she's a co-worker of life with the Sisters of Life who are in an incredible uh, uh, actual uh, fight to sustain the living, the breathing, the the, the small fetus within a woman's body to to fulfillment, to be born. And uh, it's a big fight that goes on day to day. And you're in it, Gia, obviously. Yes, I am. So so let's let's talk about your involvement. Uh, You've been in the the pro-life movement for a few years now. Uh, what made you head into this direction? Well, um, around the time when I was about 12 years old, I had known what abortion was, and I happened to come across it by accident. I was reading a popular teen novel at the time, and abortion came up, and I, I didn't know what that was. So I asked my mother, and without any graphic details, my mom told me that abortion was when a woman was pregnant and she just didn't want to be pregnant anymore. And... With the new technology that was coming out, I thought they would take the baby out and put it into a woman who wanted the baby. And my mom corrected me and said, no, they take the baby out and the baby dies. And at that point, I said to myself, and I kept thinking, this is wrong. How how can they do that? How can they make a baby die? Um, After that, I went on to high school, and I became involved in the pro-life club there. And on two separate occasions, I had the privilege of attending a pro-life workshop at St. Joseph Seminary in Dunwoody, where uh, Cardinal John O'Connor had celebrated Mass. And it's it's a memory I'll never forget. Um, And at that workshop, I also got to meet a lot of of high school students who um, they themselves considered abortion. And I also met a woman who was post-abortive. So I, I realized the issue was in different backgrounds. Um, And then afterwards, I went on to college, but unfortunately in college, I didn't get a chance to be as active as I wished. I was working during the day, and I attended classes at night. Um, And just a few years ago, I decided to leave my job to focus on school. And as soon as I graduated, I was ready to get back into the work field and um, unable to find a job, I felt this was an opportunity for me to really get involved. Uh, I looked online to see what I could do, and I came across the 40 Days for Life website, and that, that within a few days I was in front of an abortion clinic praying for the very first time. Now let me just, uh, just interrupt you on one thing. You said a 40 Days for Life website. What is that exactly? 40 Days for Life is a um, worldwide campaign. It started a few years ago back in Texas, and uh, they, they believe in just peaceful prayer, fasting for 24 hours for 40 days straight. 
they do two campaigns in, in the year, for the fall and the spring, and they are currently now doing their spring campaign. Um, it has grown from, like I said, a little town in Texas to now it's worldwide. I mean, Australia is participated, um, and also this year 10 cities in Spain have also participated. That's amazing. Mm, that's it, that's it spread is. that quickly. Now, now, obviously, you've been doing this for a while. Uh, you've been going to abortion clinics. Now, do you go alone? Um, I don't go alone. I have a neighbor of mine who, um, by accident, I found out was very pro-life. I had put a pro-life sign in my window, and she approached me, and I realized she was very pro-life. She wanted to go out and do more, and I told her about my experience having gone to the clinic that one time. And we just talked, and we both realized we had a passion for it. We both went together to the March for Life in Washington last year, and we realized that this was just an amazing movement. The young people that you see in Washington was just, it was unbelievable. You have to be there to see it. And unfortunately, the media doesn't cover it. How many so, people were there? Uh, could you give us um, information? I know this year, I did attend this year, and they said it was probably close to half a million people, if not more. Wow. That's, uh, that's so, you know, it's so amazing, but also uh, heartwarming to see that the faith is strong out yes, there. Yes, it is, it's and it's, it's such great hope to see it, because we, we live day by day, and we really don't think anything's going well, but and then we just have that moment, and it's, it's just wonderful. Now, obviously, you were properly trained to do this kind of work. Um, how long does it take? It doesn't take long. I mean, if you have the passion to do something and to be active, it, you, you don't really need um, anything else. Of course, prayer is a very big part of the training. Without prayer, you can't go anywhere. Um, and if anybody is interested in doing it, I would suggest that they contact their local pregnancy center um, check out groups either in your parish or nearby parishes, see what they're doing and how they're getting involved. How did your family really act when you told them that you were going to do this type of ministry? Um, my family was very supportive. Um, at first, uh, it was just talk. They didn't think I was going anywhere with it. Uh, when I did start, decide to go out to the clinics, my mom was very scared because the abortion clinic I go to is in the South Bronx, and uh, the reputation of the South Bronx isn't very good, so my mom was very fearful of that. But now, since I go on a daily basis, she's been very supportive and very proud of me. And then she should be. I mean, it's the amazing thing to even just the, thinking about doing such a thing, let alone actually going out and, and, and doing it, do the work of it, and, 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 and you were putting yourself in harm's way. No matter what people may think, it is a very, very risky situation. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt threatened? Um, I've never really felt threatened. Um, we're very lucky that we haven't had any incidences. There's been a few times where uh, the clinic escorts like to get into a confrontation with the sidewalk counselors from the local pregnancy center who are always there on abortion day. Um, the cops have been called a few times, but nothing's really escalated to an arrest. We're talking with uh, Gia Chinta de Tiello, and uh, I like prefer to call her Gia because I know Gia, <laughs> uh, but uh, she's been involved heavily in the pro-life movement. And, and Gia, we, we, we just spoke about a lot about your work in this, uh, in this type of ministry. Have you ever, I mean, you've confronted people obviously going in and out of the, of the uh, abortion clinics. Uh, did you ever get anybody to turn around? I've never personally, but I have witnessed it. Um, I just, I, I'm the prayer warrior. I just pray, but I, I have seen a lot of the sidewalk counselors who speak with the girls and let them know that what they are, who, what they're carrying is an actual human being. What a lot of people don't realize is that these young girls are so lost and they're so scared when they found out they're pregnant that they go to an abortion clinic to get advice to get their options, and they're lied to by being told that it's not a baby. It's just a clump of cells, um, a blood clot, a product of conception. 
And we let them know before they go in that it is a baby and that they don't need to have this abortion. Have you ever can, uh, hit, a, uh, hit upon a politician uh, on this issue of, of abortion? And uh, have you ever uh, moved a politician to do something about it? We have, I haven't. Um, me and my friend April, my neighbor I had spoken about earlier, um, we haven't uh, really sat down with anyone. Uh, about a month ago or so, there was a bill that was passed by the New York City Council, Bill Number 371, which was targeting a number of pregnancy pro-life centers. This bill was supported by NARAL pro-choice as well as Planned Parenthood. We did want to have a meeting with our local congressmen, uh, councilmen, actually, and um, we thought we would be able to sit with him and speak with him about our, our ideas. And since we go out to the clinic nearly every day, we felt like we had a very legitimate reason to see him. But unfortunately, we were told later on by one of his workers that it was a controversial bill that he was aware of, but he wasn't going to see anybody about it. And unfortunately, um, he was one of those that did um, agree on the bill. Well, we have to keep a watch of such uh, politicians. I mean, as Catholics, the, uh, the one thing that we do have in power is, is the vote. And uh, listening to what you just said, uh, all of you out there, you can make a difference by checking in to the voting records of such politicians and see who is for abortion and who's against it, and really uh, consider that in, in the next time you get into the a voting booth, because it's very key, and it's very important to our faith. And also, we're talking about life. We're talking about children. We're talking about the future of the faith itself. So we should consider that. Chia Chinta, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it was very enlightening, and uh, I hope everyone sees how much it takes to do such work, such, such ministry, uh, the work that the Blessed Mother actually wants us to do to help the smallest of the small of the faith and to keep our future intact, because with children, well, that is the faith, and, uh, and that's where we have to really focus on. Gia, thank you so much. Uh, our next guest coming up in just a few moments 